as you mount, okay, and you're here, right? Sometimes, you know, you definitely want to keep the elbows low, okay? But when you put your chest down, they'll typically have their arms kind of here to alleviate weight, or they possibly may start working on your knee, push the knee in a half guard, but you have a lot of opportunity to pull the knees off, I mean, pull their arms off, okay? So you should anticipate that John did, he's gonna push your knee into a half guard, and then you can pull this up here, okay? And then you posture up, you control one wrist and the other. It's not about pushing with your hands, it's about putting your weight over the arms, the controls, okay? From here, it's my weight. It's not necessarily me pushing in him because I can only push as much as gravity will allow me to push, okay? Because any form of push, it'll all push myself up. So I have to put weight on, okay? So if you see all that weight. So as I turn, the, the, the lean my head to the right, I'm gonna extract his arm to the left and I stretch it out. I wanna stretch it out so that my elbow, God bless him, can drop on the mat and block his arm, okay? Now, when you think of the concept of stretching it out, if I stretch it here, I can't block his elbow with my elbow. And if I do this, you put it down and you start pushing my knee, and then I'm getting stuck. This is the whole reason why you wanna control this arm, okay? And to be able to extract it, separate it from the el from his elbow, from his rib, so that you can attack him, okay? So, as I go here, I wanna stretch this out and pull here so that I can drop my elbow on the mat so I can immediately come under. Now, here we did head control, okay? And I kind of bring my knee up so that it's harder for him to push my knee, okay? He doesn't have the angle. If my knee's back here, he kind of does, but my leg better hook onto his leg here, which is where he possibly would want to straighten his leg, lifting it up. He puts it flat on the mat, and now I get stuck in a half guard, and he comes up with an underhook. So you gotta remember, whenever you have an underhook, which is what I have here, he's also got an underhook, okay? So that's his underhook. So you're either gonna take away that underhook by creating an awkward angle, because he doesn't have a lot of power there, or this better hook here, and you better be attacking this, because he's gonna engage that arm to help this arm here, okay? So the question is, what do you do with this arm? How do you attack it? So as I'm here, push here, Extract it, drop it. From here, we control the head and I keep walking it up, 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 here, okay? Now from here, if his arm's bent here, I'm blocking it with my left arm here. He can't really bridge too effectively. Can you bridge? No. No, you know why? Because I'm lifting his head up off the mat. In order, remember also this, in order for somebody to bridge, they have to slowly, like you tuck your chin and, and he has to put his back of his head on the mat in order to bridge. If I'm pulling his head up, he's not gonna bridge. It's a counter to the upa. So always remember that. This is why the head control, it's not that your just arm is here because you wanna just hug his head. It's that you wanna lift the head so that he can't lift his hips. Because if he, in order for him to lift his hips, he has to get it, yes. You see how he can lift it, okay? But here, if I start lifting his head, I'll counter the hips. So it's very important that you understand these mm -hmm. can. So here, I have a couple options. I could potentially get key lock here, okay? I could potentially control the tricep here with my head on the outside. I have a head on, even from the mount, I can hop off or I can begin to get a 10S mount and possibly get arm locks, okay? But <clears throat> it's too easy here. I'll go to your head. Yes, sir. It's too easy for him to kind of counter that arm lock. So what you can do is this. Instead of hugging his head, reach it out this way here. I'm just gonna go right here, okay? And I'm gonna start cranking it here. I'm gonna hold that wrist out and I'm gonna start cranking it. His jaw, not his neck, his jaw to turn the head, okay? Because what's gonna happen is that that arm has to come into play in order to save his neck here as I torque it more. And you kind of move it this way because he's gonna want it like this here. Now, I have a much more effective S mount as I can even regroup the right hand here. And I wanna put 
split out. I don't want you guys to do this. Some schools teach this. This is a good way to lose your balance that way and to tear your knee, which is how I pull my knee. Because the person bridged up, landed, and then my knee twisted and went pop, pop, pop. And when you twist and pop, it's well. From here, look. I reach and grab my collar. I can pull my collar down, frame his head. He's gonna defend his arms right here, okay? And I wanna turn his head towards my left knee, okay? As I lean on him, I don't wanna lean back. As my leg, I'm gonna replace my hand. The second my hand is replaced by the leg, my hand goes to the back of his tricep. So that kind of cool. Okay. <clears throat> Crossing your feet is very important. How you cross your feet, what you do your feet is very important. In the beginning, you learn, well, I'm gonna pinch my knees. That's for super beginners. When you understand arm locks, it's opening your knees because I'm controlling his head, if you notice. It's hard for him to rotate his head. And my feet, the body leg, my right leg, is over the left leg as I'm controlling this exactly what I taught the kids yesterday, okay? Because as I bring his arm together, he can't really defend, okay? This right here, these are hooks, okay? They just need to make sure that my feet don't separate as I'm scooping that shoulder so that my hip can drive into him. And my heels, I'm pushing this down so that my heel stays in contact with the mat as I'm pulling his arms together. As I extract here, I do not want my shoulders to go on the, on the mat to finish the arm line. I want my lower back to go on the mat. Like this. Lower back. I don't want this. This is weak. This is literally strong here. Okay. Because what happens is I'm engaging my hips in order to put my lower back on the mat. Oftentimes, especially when kids do it, you'll notice they're going to go like this. This is a great way to lose an arm off. Because if I'm here, Philip, can you slowly turn to your right and pull this elbow out? Oh, yes. Look. Alright? There's literally no reason why he can't bring his arm down. Okay? So your finishing position is going to be crossed feet, hand to collar. Free hand's got to do something. It's going to either be here or here. Okay, for now, he defends his arms, I cup the elbow, and I begin to bring these elbows together. From here, as my left hand slides up the forearm, I catch that wrist, and I pin it through my shoulder, and then I put my lower back on the mat. Notice how my back is bowed, not arched, bowed. When I bow my back, it's my hips. When I arch my back, it's all lower back. Your lower back is weak. See how smooth that remount one? Look, here, one, extract and keep it out there. And I keep pushing out there, like I wanna pull his arm out of his shoulder socket. And this right hand gets the boss grip. You're gonna get a shallow boss grip, but it's just enough to start driving across uh, his jaw, uh. okay? I keep pressing this out. Because, yes, 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 yes. Because he's gonna wanna relieve that pressure as I put my shoulder on the outside of his tricep, okay? Typically you won't see anybody doing it this way. But from here what's nice is that it's very difficult for him to bring his right arm back to the mat and roll to his back, okay? From here, I'm gonna draw my hip forward, slide, set my arms, bring his face, He's going to defend his arm, okay? And I'm going to turn his head. Watch his feet to the left over. Yes. Notice how I was able to stay on because my left foot was out like a kickstand. If my foot were tucked under his back, I'd start losing balance to the back. And that's a, that's a that's a common escape. From here, I turn his head into my knee as I lean onto him. And look at my right foot; it's bladed. I'm not stepping on it because the pressure will be relieved. I take my left foot. You can just do this. One, two. Walk your heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. So you you practice the position. It goes from the face to the back of the tricep. You can pull it here, get back to the tricep. Sit leaning forward, cross your feet. Cross your feet and adjust and keep tucking this in. Your right foot goes over your left. As you pull here, your left hand slides up and conveniently 
extends this. From here, I want to ball my back. Okay. And finish. This is the proper way to finish home. If you get these arm locks, it's a done deal. You do this, especially when you feet on cross. Clear your arm out. It's a lock. That's it. There's nothing stopping. Whether you rules out of it, whatever, there's nothing stopping from you. And that's a great way to lose position one of them. Okay? So, get them out, and you're going to extract one more time. And pressure. Tilt out. Boss grip. Turn the head. Keep pushing that on. Yes. Here. Dip your head on the outside so I can trap it in my bicep. I can regrip right here on the boss grip and keep pulling my right elbow to the right hip. I slide knee. Put S mount. Dip my head so I can reach. It's hard for me to reach. Here. Turn the head, walk that leg over, pull that on. See, I stayed up. Yes, yes, it's hard for him to defend them. From here, I extract it. Go on my back. Okay, guys, one, two, three. This is the most thorough way.